Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. This episode is sponsored by Wacom, Wacom.com. Wacom, Wacom, for Wacom, for Fana, Fana, for Wacom, Wacom. Mm. Make it on a Wacom, a Wacom Cintiq. Wacom Cintiq Creative Pen Display is perfectly equipped to help you begin your journey as an illustrator. It offers a truly natural experience and helps take your creative ideas to the next level. Speaking of the next level, do you want to be in the Face the Truth Cool Fan Club? It's easy. Mikel Nolamas did it, and you can do it too by going to jasonseiler.threadless.com. Support the podcast and get a cool coffee cup or other cool things. It's not the coffee, it's the mug. So as all of you know, for every episode so far, I've put it out there to all of you to submit drawings or paintings of my guests as a way to share your work with the world, with the guests, and also give you an opportunity to win a Cintiq by Wacom. Last week, I had the pleasure of chatting with stand-up comedian Joel Jimenez, and he chose Carlos Rubio's painting of him. Congratulations, Carlos. Carlos wrote me a really nice email that I would like to share with you all, if you don't mind. The podcasts are excellent. The idea of inviting people to participate with caricatures is a great motivation to practice and work hard, especially with such an incredible price. A few weeks ago, I was about to buy one of those Huon tablets. Ugh. But I thought about your podcast and told myself, I'm going to work hard on those caricatures, and with a little luck, I can get my own Cintiq. With a full-time job, kids, and a life, I had to sketch on the bus and work late. I'm so glad it paid off. Thank you so much, and thank you to Joel for choosing my caricature. I never thought he would. It's my pleasure, Carlos. I'm so happy for you, and awesome work too, man. It's been a nice weekend so far, mostly chilling, which is much needed. Finished my first cover for Mad Magazine, which will not be released until June 11th. I cannot wait. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Also got to see Avengers Endgame, hands down the best comic book movie ever. So damn good. Game of Thrones Episode 3 tonight, looking forward to that. Oh, and my guest this coming week is my friend Fred Harper, who is an amazing comic book artist, caricature illustrator, and fine artist. I want to try something new. If you have questions for Fred, I would love it if you would record your questions vocally with your phone and then email them to me at facethetruthpodcast at gmail.com, and I will play them during our talk. I think that will be a little bit more interesting and entertaining for you all. And I need them by this Wednesday, which I believe is the 1st of May. Okay, enough of that. My guest this week is an amazing, talented artist and a truly grounded and creative artist, always pushing himself and asking himself what more could he do with his art. I had a really great time catching up with him and talking with him about his art. I know you'll enjoy this as much as I did. Please welcome my pal, master body painter, Mr. Paul Rooston. So how you been, man? Good. It's been a long time. Good, good, yeah. It's been like 16 years. At least. <laughs> Isn't that Is it, I think maybe it was even more than that. Possibly, know. possibly, yeah. <clears throat> had to be like two, awesome. 2000, 2002 or 2003. It's probably the last time I saw oh, okay. it. Maybe four. I don't know. <clears throat> How have oh, you been? Oh, good. <laughs> I just literally finished uh, my cover for Mad Magazine, like just like not even an hour ago. That's awesome, man. And I sent it in to them, and I was just like, oh, are they going to like it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and, um, you know, I have until the end of the month to finish it, but I wanted to, you know, I've got other things to do too. So I just wanted to make sure I did it, but I've got enough time if there's changes that, that are needed. But, um, but Man, basically that's, that's such a huge uh, deal. Oh, uh, dude. Huge deal. <laughs> well, especially like, you know, it's been, I, I mean, literally since I was 10 years old, I've wanted to do it, you yeah. know, well, but, um, they, uh, yeah, they, they love it. They were really excited about it. They said, um, we put it in the books. It's, it's, it's done. Everyone's happy with it. Um, and it's actually a kind of a gross cover, so they were like, "It's absolutely disgusting, and it's perfect." So I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. That's great, man. I mean, you've you know, I was like super proud of you when you when you got the time cover, the first time cover. Oh, I was like, yeah. "That's." I was actually bragging to like in laws and stuff <laughs> about that because in laws look down on freelance artists. You know, it's not a real oh, yeah. job, but not all in in laws, but with some of my in laws. But um, I would I would brag to them about you, and then they would be like, "Well, why aren't you doing that, <laughs> Damn, man?" I'm just yeah, trying to tell not... you what artists are capable of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? Um, um, I, I'm, we're, we're rolling. If you wanna, if you're ready to go. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Go uh, for it. 
yeah, thanks so much for doing this, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank and you. Um, and yeah, it's been like a long time, man. Um, and it's been interesting because I've been following your work um, for years as well. I mean, basically, you and I were friends. Uh, we, we hung out a few times. Um, we had mutual friends like Grigor and, and Jesse, and uh, you worked with those guys at Great America doing uh, caricature, uh, like airbrush caricatures and stuff. And and I thought, didn't you originally move to the East Coast? Yes. Yeah. I, so I did two summers at Six Flags Great America just outside Chicago. And then <clears throat> I got married uh, in 2003. <laughs> A long time ago yeah and and uh and my wife is from connecticut so we moved out to the east coast near rhode island and i lived there for 10 years and now i live in redondo beach california oh wow yeah that's yeah. that's what I, when you sent me the book which we can we'll talk about later and i was like looking through it and reading th- some of it and uh i was like oh he's in california now son of a bitch yeah <laughs> I, I basically I follow my wife wherever she wants to go. I met her in, in college in '98 at the Art Institute of yeah. Chicago, oh, okay. the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and uh, <clears throat> I just follow her wherever she wants to go. And then and then in 2014 she was like, "Hey, do you want to move to California?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. we had just avoided a huge snowstorm the following winter. It was like yeah. one of the biggest ever of their of the of their time, and so I was I was super excited to get out. That's awesome. I I'm not a huge fan of L.A., but you know around L.A. is awesome. Like I was in Burbank um, a year ago, and uh, I that that was, that's pretty nice. Um, yeah, Burbank can handle the the weather is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but well, I, it's I, weird. I I get like I've definitely acclimated. If I if I went to Chicago in the in the in February. I would die. I would just instantly die. <laughs> Especially oh, yeah. this past winter that I heard got like 50 below without the wind chill. That's crazy. Yeah, there was a few times it was like absolutely nuts. But uh, you know what? What What's really weird is I, I think it was last week. It might have been just a little over a week ago. We got about three or four inches of snow. Oh. And it was – and this is after – you know, a few days of like 50, 60 degrees and we're just yeah. feeling like, oh, this is great. Spring is here. And then it snows and you're like, what? My car was buried again. <laughs> Damn, like, that's the worst. That's the worst <laughs> to have that in April. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, in the East Coast, I, but back when I lived in Rhode Island, I would do work in, in New York City from time to time. I would just hop on the train, ride through there. And New York City is super inspiring. But I, I, I kind of agree with you on Los Angeles. Everything around LA is cool. But but L.A. downtown is it's kind of like the Walking like Dead. Po- it's like a po- post apocalyptic yeah. post apocalyptic New York City with smaller skyscrapers. Dude, you know? I was there. Um, I can't remember. Maybe five six years ago. Um, and there was this TV show called um, Best Inc. And they asked me to be a guest judge for one episode. Oh, sweet. And so um, uh, they asked me to be a guest judge for an episode. And um, basically what ended up happening was I, I, I was like, oh, sure, I'll do that. You know, all I have to do is basically show up, um, look at, you know, the competitors, like their artwork, or whatever, and then just talk to them about their artwork. Well, I, they never told me that it was going to be in um, what's that called? Uh, what's that really bad part? downtown skid row Row. yeah yeah everything is there pretty much anything yeah it it, it was insane so uh they picked me up i go to skid row and while we were there filming all day there was gunshots um there's all kinds of crazy stuff (laughs) going on and then um after we're done filming um i got picked up to get dropped up at the the airport and we're driving through and it looked like the walking dead there was just people walk like hundreds of homeless people and there's a people lot of homeless people doing drugs right on the street. And I was yep. like, this is a nightmare, man. Yeah, I, mean, I had no I guess, idea. It was it like, kind of makes sense because if you're going to be homeless, do it, you know, where the weather is pretty good year round, <laughs> even though it does get cold in the winter, especially if you <laughs> acclimate. But I mean, I, I can't say that to you without like feeling like a total idiot. <laughs> no, I always, I, I actually always think the same thing in Chicago because there's a lot of homeless people here as well. I'm always like, man. The first thing that I would do if I was homeless is get the fuck out of Chicago Amen <laughs> right away. <laughs> like I would I would do whatever I had to do to get to get a bus ticket and then just get out of here. I mean, yeah. seriously, yeah. it's it's yeah. crazy. I mean, but, it's uh, cool in August, but geez, I can't, yeah. do, can't do the winter. Did you – so when when you started uh, – so you, you left and you went to the East Coast. You started getting into the body painting stuff pretty quick, right? 
Yeah. So, so, um, when I was at, basically when I, I, I've had such a like bouncy career jumping all over my various interests and, um, at the Art Institute, like, I'm going to try to make this kind of a short, short story, but it's going to be sort of... Oh, that's like, all right. Whatever, man. Goes into how I got into body painting. But basically, I was at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, and uh, one of the other guys who you didn't mention is uh, Alejandro Ayala, who I went to school with. He's another one of that crew from Great America of Grigor, Jesse, Alejandro Ayala, uh, Ed Raza, uh, Sexy Dex, Marcus Walker, you know, a whole bunch of guys. It was like a fraternity. <laughs> But basically, I was I was before I started doing caricature, I was sitting in um, this office that I was working in at the school, and Ayala and I were doing uh, cartoons for the school newspaper, comic strips, and and he had shown me some of his work that he did over the summer, which was a collection of uh, caricatures, rejects, and a whole whole assortment of drawings that he did over the summer, and there was a noticeable difference in the quality of his work before the summer and after and he was showing me these drawings after the summer and i saw these caricatures and i was like oh my god i want to do that yeah bad like yeah. i didn't even like i'd grown up going to six flags seeing the caricature artist being blown away but i i uh, <clears> never <throat> it never crossed my mind i could do that and he just showed me that it was possible and so yeah. I, I wanted to do that real bad and the same kind of thing happened at Great America, there was one of the T-shirt artists, Mario Seja, who goes by Mario Inc. At, uh, in Chicago. He still does he still does body painting and tattooing and all sorts of things for various events and stuff. But he brought this calendar that he had made, <clears throat> and uh, and I, I saw I think I still have the calendar too somewhere in my in my stash. But uh, it that was kind of the same thing. I was like, oh man, I wanna I can do body painting. I would love to do body painting sometime. But I had no idea how to get into it, you know. And yeah. and I remember I, I remember like the very first time I saw body painting, it was like I was 12 years old, and I was standing in a supermarket, looking at the magazines on the shelf, and there was uh, the cover of Vanity Fair, Demi Moore painted in a suit. Uh, photographed. Oh, by, I remember that. Yeah. yeah photographed by Anna Lebo, Annie Leibowitz. And I remember at 12 being blown away that there here's completely nude Demi Moore on the cover of a magazine in the supermarket in front of everybody, including 12 year old me. And I yeah. thought that was, that was just like the coolest thing I ever saw. And, yeah. and, uh, I became a big fan of Vanity Fair at that time. Oh yeah. I mean, that was, <laughs> what, a, what a powerful cover. Oh know? yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, and then so I moved to the East Coast, and it was still, like, lingering in my mind, body painting, you know. there was I was kind of jumping all over, like, what do I want to do? Be a graphic designer? Do Because I, I, I basically cut off my Midwest caricature career to move to the East Coast. I, I, I was also teaching at the Art Institute of Chicago, and I cut that off to move to the East Coast. And, and I was just bas basically starting from scratch. Yeah. And I took I took this graphic design job, um, which I was, I was miserable at, it, the whole commercial commercial art world of graphic design i i'm just not built for that and i was i was little by little i was like dwindling in life i was just like falling apart drinking a lot and stuff and then i got laid off and then i took another job and in a month i got laid off again and then i took another job and i in the meantime i was i was air, started airbrushing t-shirts and then i was also doing like whatever freelance gigs i could find which which was like mostly illustration and uh and I took a third job doing graphic design, and they gave me two weeks to start. I actually, like, I was very, like, um, not willing to do it without getting what I wanted. And so they offered me this salary, and I was like, nah, I kind of want this salary. And they're like, oh, well, we can't give that to you. And then and then, and then, then I, le I left the interview. I was like, thanks, I'm not interested. Left the interview. They called me in the parking lot as I was leaving and said, we'll give you the money. It's yours. Can you start in two weeks? And I said, yeah. And so two weeks came around. And I, I sort of, uh, I woke up and I just felt like this, this ain't right. This is not happening. I can't do this. I cannot do this. Yeah. And I called them up and said, I'm sorry. I, I took another job doing t-shirts for myself, you know, and, and I just kind of decided I'm going to just do this hardcore. I'm not going to work for anybody. I want to work for myself. And, uh, so I did that and it was pretty scary. It was a pretty big leap. And, and then I just, I kept doing t-shirts, which helped hone my airbrush skills even more. Now, how, where were you doing t-shirts at? Like, was it, I was, did you have a location or something? Yeah, I was you... doing t-shirts 
at the time it was a mixtape store. Oh. So like a hip hop hip hop mixtape store. Oh, cool. Okay. And then uh, there was this huge, um, like they they like laid down the law on on people doing mixtapes. It was kind of like unwritten cool. Like you could do that stuff. Like nobody, yeah. nobody sweated it. But then then all of a sudden they they crashed down on that and shut it all down. And so the mixtape store turned into a barbershop. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a it was like a hip hop barbershop. So I did that for a few years. I don't know how many. I can't even remember when I stopped. It kind of it's kind of little by little trickled, trickled down. But during that time, <clears throat> I scored this gig uh, doing editorial illustrations for an adult magazine, which was my favorite thing to draw people any way that I wanted to go along with these articles of of fiction, nonfiction, educa- educational. Um, articles in this adult magazine in Boston. And then just one day I was like, hey, if you want, I could paint one of the models for your photo spreads. I can body paint it. And I sort of presented it like I'd done it before and I'd never I'd never done it before. I'd only seen it. And uh, they said, well, let's give it a shot. And and so we did it and I was like, I was completely hooked. Yeah. I haven't awesome. stopped since. I basically found myself and... Uh, and little by little, I became less and less interested in drawing and more and more interested in body painting. And, and I stuck with that. That's so interesting. I mean, what was it about it that initially, besides the fact that you're hanging out with beautiful women all the time? Um, <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, just the art form in itself. I mean, what what did you feel like you had like a freedom to kind of like, could you do anything you wanted for those images when you when they were asking? Or did they ask you, hey, we want you know, her to look like a zebra or something. Yeah. I mean, I, I, um, I basically pitched the idea of, uh, of painting clothes on the model, which is, it's like a very popular Trump Loy style of body painting, but I wanted, I had this idea of like, how about I paint her backwards since it's an adult magazine, you know, it's an erotic magazine. I'll paint her in her lingerie, like start with the underwear and then the bra and then the pants and then the shirt, and then we'll photograph it, but display it backwards. So it looks like she's undressing. You know, mm. just, just backward. I and see. they said, okay. yeah, let's do that. And, was, you know, that kind of body painting is really easy. You don't have to do a very, very good job to make it believable. But if you do a good job, then it's it's hyper believable, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's awesome. <clears throat> and so, like, I just, I don't know, things just really fell into place. And I, I, uh, I don't know, I was, I, unlike every other art form, especially freelance illustration, I was kind of control, in control of... Um, you know what I was doing almost almost all the time. This entire I've been doing it now. Yeah, that's unusual. That's really unusual <laughs> in the art yeah. world for sure. Yeah, that's so that awesome. part of that. Part of that I like. You know. Yeah. But with that said, um, a a lot of my um, clout, I guess I don't know what the right word is. A lot of my control is the result of skills that I picked up at Six Flags Great America. Mm. The the ability to work fast. Yeah. And at high quality. And so most body painters didn't have that background. They don't have that background. And they don't have, like, the, the knowledge of how to work under severe pressure, abandon uh, your ability to sketch mm-hmm. or erase, you know, just go with the flow and put it out there and make it happen and hope for the best, you know? Well, yeah, and, and, and like, when you were at Great America, you guys were, like, doing insane hours, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Twelve hours a day, six days a week. Yeah. It was like uh, it was boot camp. It was, it was just, yeah, and it's just nonstop in the hot sun. Um, Sometimes, yeah. I mean, we were in booths, but it, like some of the months it would get crazy humid, and we would be just like chugging. We'd have these huge cups of water that we would just chug. Sometimes like six times a day. Yeah. And and we would put we'd spray ourselves with the airbrush with water. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It was it was hot. It was it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Well, that, that is a great um, advantage too, though, to be able to do, to be able to work that quickly. Um, yeah. Are you strict? Are you still strictly airbrush when you do everything? Is it, or do you use regular brushes and stuff? I've been playing a little bit more with regular brushes lately. It's it's funny because because uh, growing up, I spent my first eighteen years trying to achieve what an airbrush could achieve using mm-hmm. colored colored pencils and markers. And mm. I never could. Obviously, you could never get that perfect creation, yeah. you know. And I just didn't know about the airbrush yet, you know. 
And <clears throat> and then I finally got my hands on the airbrush, and that was the hardest tool I ever had to learn. It was it was painful, um, but I figured it out little by little. And uh, and then now that I've like sort of figured out the airbrush, just like within the last five years or so, I'm I'm kind of itching to do more painterly textures, more brush painterly textures, and less smooth. Yeah. You know, so now I play around with it a little bit, and I bounce back and forth, and I use I use what I what I need. So if I need a specific look, look, I use that, you know, and and I just throw it, I just apply it that way. I, I'm not like now you I, one thing. Um, first of all, I'm gonna hold this book up real quick. So Paul sent me this awesome book. This book is incredible. Um, it's got so many just amazing uh, photos in it. So much just. It's it's crazy, man. How much work you've done? It's insane. Yeah, just beautiful work. And there's and then the thing that I was wondering too is just the the ones that you're doing, like where you're photographing in water and everything. How oh, yeah. how, how does I mean, what are you using? Does, does it well, stay for a while, or do you have to just take pictures yeah. really quick? Or it's like temporary that's... tattoo makeup that you would, like you would see people getting temporary tattoos at the at a theme so park it, or something. Okay, so it's more of a it's more durable. Yeah. yeah. It's awful. It, is, is, it, is it hard to work with? <laughs> no, it's. I mean, it's formulated for use with airbrush. It's used for makeup. Um, okay. It's just hard. It's hard to take off. You know. So yeah, that's what that's models what don't wondering. like me afterwards. Yeah. But I. You know. I, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, I was going to say. You know, what's funny is um, there was a question for you from uh, Juan Gastelum. Um, I think that's I said, he. He just wrote me and, said, and explained how to say his name um, the correct <laughs> way because I think I keep messing it up. But um, anyways, he was asking. He said that. You know, he wanted to know what kind of paint you use for brushes because he painted a girl and the magenta wouldn't come off for three days. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, when I read that, I started laughing so hard because that I'm like, happen. Thinking, this that girl like happen. volunteers for this. Um, I'm thinking this scenario. She's like, she's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do this model thing. That sounds really cool. You know, meanwhile, she works at like an office or something. And then <laughs> for the next three fucking days, she's she's magenta. Like, what are you? And are you like one of the, you know, <laughs> are you like a superhero or something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it varies. It varies from skin type to skin type, and obviously from brand to brand. Um, one of the, one of the makeups that's in that book is is this underwater swimming pool one, and that was yeah. shot during Hurricane Irene, like actually during the hurricane, because that was back when I was like pretty pretty big on Google Plus, and I was doing these live live painting sessions. So I had like this commitment to to post this at a specific time, and there was like a huge hurricane. And we we shot it, intended to shoot it underwater, so we went underwater. So above the pool, it was crazy windy, a tree fell over, it was insane. Underwater, it was totally peaceful and beautiful. But then when we were done with everything, she went home, and she had lost the power at her home for like three days. And she couldn't couldn't wash off the, the makeup. Because her her water heater wasn't heating up. <laughs> oh no! So she had this like fish koi body painting on for three days. Oh, but yeah, man. if if a model's skin is too dry, uh, it it can be harder to come off. But that's like a that's a good thing, you know. And then also, I don't know what brand he used. Some colors tend to stain a little bit. Some yellows, I noticed yellow can be bad sometimes. Um, but it, it varies. Uh, I think it's just extremely important to. To use stuff that is FDA compliant for use on skin, don't just go throw on anything. Even if it says non-toxic, it's not necessarily safe for your skin. And, yeah. and you'll you'll run into issues like that if you're using stuff that's not meant for use on skin, especially. <laughs> but if you if you don't, I understand creativity and art and art making and stuff. Like sometimes you have to use something that is not meant for use on skin. I think it's important. You know, this is not like a piece of paper or canvas. This is a human yeah. living human body so you have to make sure they know that you're using something that's not meant for use on skin yeah, it's, it's so funny man like i just i just kept thinking of all these scenarios like she's got to go to the grocery store yeah. or, like, <laughs> and she's like magenta <laughs> you know what's hey, crazy what's up, a... what's up guardians of the galaxy what are you doing here <laughs> a lot of models that i've worked with uh. they they don't shy away from that they love that so i'll, I'll paint them and then they're like happily go to go to mcdonald's mm. or starbucks or something to pick oh, up okay. some food after the shoot and they're like completely freakish and i don't i don't like a lot of attention i'm i'm an introvert and i, I don't like people looking at me and stuff but uh <clears throat> what's cool about body painting especially when i'm live on stage nobody's looking at me you yeah know? 
So you just so I can, your zone. I can show my yeah I can show my work nobody's looking at me I could go to a restaurant with a painted model and not worry about people staring at me they're all looking at this weird yeah thing, you know it's in front of them how long does it usually take you to do one I mean some of them are way more complicated some of them are you know like it, it, I'm sure it depends on what the shoots for or whatever but uh, how long does it typically take to do, to finish one on on average it takes me about three hours um, wow. The longest body painting I did was six hours, and that was for a, a competition. And we were given six hours, so I used it, you know. <clears throat> yeah. But I, like one of you asked me earlier, like what what do I like about body painting? And I think the big thing that I like about body painting versus illustration and character and everything, um, I'm I'm really impatient in art making. Like I can't I cannot do what you do. I can't sit. For, for you know 20 hours to two weeks to finish a fully rendered painting i get so bored so fast yeah it's hard I for me love, too sometimes <laughs> i love having the requirement to finish in just a few hours and doing doing it at, at the best possible quality that i can and it's, you know you have to sacrifice some things in yeah order to finish quickly you can't totally you can't spend 20 hours on a on a person you know um and set them aside for a week, you know. So I love that. That, um, that is a nice feeling. I, I've, you know, that's that's kind of like it's doing like plein air painting or something like that. You just you get outside. You're painting for yourself. Uh, whatever you do is whatever you do, and it's done. It's done. It's it. It's a good feeling, you know. It's yeah. like, oh, totally. You know, because totally. it can be daunting working on something for hours and hours yeah. and days and days. Yeah. Um, and I did that. You know, I did that with illustration. Yeah. And I found, especially once I started body painting, I found that. Boy, I really did not like doing that. I, I you're supposed to like enjoy the journey, you know, enjoy the process, and I hated the process, and I hated, I I often hated the results, which I think is common. Most guys are very self-critical and stuff, right? But I was just like never satisfied with with the results, and uh, body painting is different. Like the the uh, the process is more fun because you can talk to your canvas, and it's quicker, way quicker, you know, it's still, it's still hard work, but it's like three hours is way better than 25 hours, you know? When and you, then, when you, oh, sorry, go ahead. And then the result, what's cool about the result, and this is what separates it from everything else that, that you and, and I and other artists are familiar with, is that when the model moves with the paint on his or her skin, it becomes a whole new artwork. Yeah. And you, and you literally... Have you ever looked at a painting you did five, ten years ago that you hadn't seen that entire time and then we looked at it with such a fresh eye that it was like somebody else did it? Yeah. No, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That you get that instantaneously. When you finish a body painting, you can look at it as if someone else did it. And so your self critic is kind of like lax. It's it's chill. Mm. And I like that. And I, I don't know if it's the same for every body painter, but that's what it's like for me. That's and interesting. Felt- do you um so when you're okay first of all this is a, a, a just a curiosity so i'm sure you've d- done all kinds of different like model shoots for different projects um is it when you get hired to do this is it kind of is it like um someone's got like a whole photo shoot idea already um and then it's up to you to come up with something or is it something that you pitch um and then m- the the second part of that would be what how do you start a project so are you um do you sketch out ideas and plan ahead a little bit what you're going to do step by step how to pull off this certain design or do you kind of just start going for it and kind of by gut i usually i usually go for it by gut basically um so the first question my my uh like my commissions are all over the place it's it varies from from like trade shows to events to private commissions to private photography workshops to Hollywood stuff advertising agency all sorts of crazy stuff and everybody has a variety of needs a lot of times they want something that they've seen before which I I generally I turn down a lot of work that I just don't feel like doing mm-hmm. and and uh, <clears throat> which I think is important to to maintain like happiness you know like if you're if you're yeah. feeling bad about a job beforehand it's going to end up unsuccessful in a way if, if oh, not yeah. just to you but to like everybody you know and yeah. so i avoid those like the plague um but for the most part 
I'd say majority of the time I I have established myself enough to where people hire me and they they'll give me like a theme and then they'll say run with it, you know, which I appreciate a lot. Uh, yeah. And then uh, as far as uh, sketching and and that sort of thing, like it's it goes like it's the same techniques with caricature, you know, live caricature, theme park caricature, uh, where you don't get the chance to sketch. So I, I really found a lot of value during those years in in the sort of like true to life jazz that comes with just going for it. I I mm. feel like when you sketch something and you nail this life in the drawing, when you try to recreate that sketch, you kill it just a little bit. It'll be a little stagnant. Yeah, and I I really like mm. I like capturing the life more than I like capturing solid technique and uh and a solid finish and uh so for 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 my whole career i i didn't sketch that much i did sketch here and there especially when a when a, an idea in my head was very complex and i needed to figure out where things would be composed um but it's super loose very very loose well do you do you um so for example i guess what i'm wondering more i guess than that is when, so if I've seen you do like like water, okay, like uh, different kind of water techniques, um, which just look beautiful, um, just Thank awesome. You. So, but before you start to do that for the first time on someone, have you on paper practiced like trying to figure out what's the best way to make convincing water, or did you just kind of wing yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. So, water is water is my favorite element so that's why I, i've done all different a lot of different types of water it's so crazy how you can draw it so many different ways and it's it's yeah. pretty hard you know to to understand the whole organ organic nature of it and yeah. I, I, my favorite type of water is the um the reflections in a swimming pool that you would see on a wall or on the surface of a swimming pool i love those like wispy white lines you know oh yeah 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 okay and so back when i was doing t-shirts I I studied that. I wanted to be able to draw that um, easily. And so mm -hmm. I definitely studied that on T-shirts and on paper. And uh, and and over time, you know, I, I do a lot of sketching just in my head, just observing. Mm -hmm. I feel like you don't actually need to physically draw to, to figure out how to understand something. And so I do a lot of that in my head. And when I when I really... I'm not sure about something, then I'll I'll go to the paper and and draw it out. But um, yeah, water is water is something that a lot of times I explored just by painting people. So I've done a lot of water paintings, and and I think every every painting I do, I do, it's not wasteful, you know. So it's not like I'm just gonna do this for the hell of it. It's like no, I'm going to learn a lot from this opportunity, and and apply it to my next body painting. And this especially became true after after having kids, you know, because time. How many kids time do you have now? Disappeared. I have two daughters. Oh, sweet! <laughs> but you lose um, a lot of time. <laughs> oh yeah. Day yep. when you have kids, and so I went yeah. from going from like five body paintings a week to like two body paintings a month for myself, not like commercial stuff. Um, and commercial stuff is like easy painting. I don't, you know, I just like bust it out, make my money, and go home. Um, my studio self work, which is predominantly what's in that book, mm -hmm. that's the stuff where I'm exploring and learning and pushing myself to get better and and going for it. And so every every two body paintings I had a month, I I took advantage of it like it was the last possible drawing I could ever do, you know. And I wanted to maximize all the learning from it. Yeah. Now that book's a beautiful book, man. It's Thank awesome. You. I've looked through it a few times now, and uh, it's just. Like I know every single time I've looked through it, I see something different that I didn't notice before. It's like there's, yeah. there's so many layers of stuff in there. Endless, isn't it? Yeah. I, like, actually, well, you know, the like, one woman that that's pregnant. Um, the first time I saw that, I didn't realize she was pregnant with the um, hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah a lot I, of I was, and I look that. back at that, I'm like, oh wait a minute, that's yeah. amazing. That, yeah. That's just so awesome. Yeah, and it's just like subtle. It's cool how subtle things can fool the mind. Yeah. You know, there's a lot I mean, of fascinating stuff with body painting. When, because unexpected. she was because she was pregnant, um, did you have to use special kinds of paint for that? Specific? No, I used the same makeup. I was just more careful with, uh, with, you know, um, what she's breathing, mm -hmm. giving her a lot of 
break time. You know, some sometimes models stand up the whole time, and I don't. Pregnant models can't do that. They need they need yeah. breaks. Yeah. Um, and I I would work faster so that I could get to to the result so she's as comfortable as possible. You know. Yeah. No, that that makes sense. Um, so do you do you ever run into weird issues? Like, do you ever do you ever have like a model that's like totally into it, and then halfway through they're like, you know, fuck this, <laughs> yeah, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> I mean, I had, I, I, I had that happen with a photographer. It was like the worst day of my life. Oh no! <laughs> but no, models tend tend to enjoy it. That's good. Yeah. Um, I mean, because yeah, there's had... al- there's always times as an artist when you have to deal with real people. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are models that I've painted that, as I'm painting it, as I'm painting them, I know I'm not, I'm never gonna work with them again. There's just no chemistry. There's like, oh, yeah. That's yeah, a part. That's a definitely a part of it. And when you find the models that you really click with, you just want to keep keep painting over and over and over and over and over. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. I mean, you've got. It seems like you've got tons of models that are. Um, I, I, now, are you, you're in California now. Um, are you doing? Um, is there a lot of like Hollywood type events and stuff that you ended up getting connected with? Yeah, I, when I started, there was a lot, a lot more. And then I, you know, it, it all like, you know, that whole thing about um, if you if you make a statement of what you want to do, it manifests itself. You know, yeah. like when I when oh, yeah. I first. Uh, when I first got here, I was like all over wanting to do Hollywood stuff. And I got a little, a few Hollywood gigs and it was really awesome. Um, but over time I really, I really value my studio work more than commercial work. Yeah. And so I've put a lot of effort into doing gallery shows and having my work printed up big and having them on display in galleries and doing live body paintings at shows and making, um, income that way because it's like, this oh, is what I want to do. And this is, what I want people to see and, and they appreciate it. They buy it and I make money and it's great, you know? So, so, you so sell it seems prints? like over time, yeah, I sell a lot of prints. seems cool. like over time, uh, my career is because I've manifested it that way is, is going that direction. And I've been doing less Hollywood stuff mm. as much as I love it. It's just like, there's just so many options and you can't, you almost like can't multitask to handle all of it. You know what I mean? Well, it's just so interesting because, you know, <laughs> That's that's why I, I as soon as uh like you sent me this book and stuff and I was looking through it I'm like I'm like damn this is awesome I got to have you on man <laughs> um, because it's like it's it's an art form that I'm not as familiar with um, and so it's just it's just interesting talking to you right now just thinking about all the different things that you could do like I I wasn't yeah. even thinking about the fact that you you know do these shoots and then you can have like a gallery show and then paint yeah. a live model or that is a really awesome yeah. idea that's and really I've done, cool. I've done a lot of uh, I've done a lot of really out of the box things. I made a, a, a hologram, you know, I was thinking, all right, well, here's this art form where it's in three dimensions. It's temporary. It only exists for a few hours before it's washed off. How do you document it in perfect 3d? You know, you can only document this thing in 2d or like video or do mm-hmm. a live performance that only exists in the memories of the people that see it. <clears throat> and so I, uh, when I was at the art Institute of Chicago, I was teaching holography, making holograms and, and I'd always wanted to make a hologram of a person, which requires this like two hundred fifty thousand dollar laser. It's basically like old school photography, but you're using laser light instead of white light, and you develop in a dark room and all that jazz. And uh, because I had that knowledge, I was like, I'm going to make a hologram of a body painting. And so I, I did a Kickstarter, raised the funds, and flew to to uh, Seattle, which is where the studio was. It's like this million dollar holographic studio and i flew the model there i flew there painted her up holographed her in in the studio and made this permanent you know documentation of a of a body painting in true 3d visible with the naked eye you know wow so that like that was one thing now i'm playing with um well, vr how, a little bit how do you see that like where can people see that well it's uh right now it's in uh, the center for holographic arts in new york city there's one there. There's one in Philadelphia at Arch Enemy Arts. Um, I had an edition of 13 of them, and I sold most of them. So most most of them are in private collections. And then how, I have, how does it work, though? I mean, I'm trying just, to picture you what... You just put it on a wall and then shine a halogen light on it, and it, it just comes to life. So it's Whoa. like... It's like, you remember, like, uh, I think Time Magazine had a Michael Jordan hologram on their cover, um, and it was like his portrait... 
and you can you can turn that was a that was a hologram but it was like a different type of hologram but it's just like that it's like if that's I, amazing. Like back back in like the 90s there was like if you went to navy pier there was like a, there was actually like a hologram store and they had like most people are familiar with these old star trek holograms that would have like a clean on or a ferengi or like one of the other a vulcan maybe i don't know but those yeah. Those are hologram. Like people have seen them, you know, but it, it used yeah. to be so expensive to produce that they're just not super common. But thank, thankfully, because I had the knowledge of it all, I was able to do it and apply it to body painting, which that's had never so been cool. done. Yeah, that's amazing, man. I'd like to check that out. But I'm always thinking about stuff like that. How can I display this stuff in three dimensions? And now you have VR taken off. So I'm looking into that. And I worked with this, mm-hmm. uh, this uh, company that has a patent that actually records um, human beings in motion in three dimensions, like this giant sort of matrix looking room with like over a thousand cameras surrounding a model. And then they just perform a little bit. And so now you could put a, a, a VR goggles on and they can exist in your space and you can walk up and explore any part of them in three dimensions. It's pretty wild. That is but crazy. It's not public yet. Um, because it's all like like this thing is happening quick. This whole like uh, industry of VR. So there's all these competing. Yeah, companies. I was talking with Wacom. Um, I I went to uh, Portland like a few months ago and did like a demo, and um, I went out to dinner with them. And they're I was asking what they're working on, and they're working on a whole VR um, yeah. technology um, where you can, you know, basically draw in in basically 3D. Wow. Um, like you can, you can be on conference calls with someone in Japan and sit there and draw a table and turn it and show people and they all, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is, this is what yeah. it's going to be like. Oh yeah. That's just crazy. Well, I um, personally think it's just a stepping stone too. VR is just the stepping stone yeah. to holography. Holography is going to come back and you'll be able to see all this stuff without anything on your head, you know, which is what I want. Yeah. I I don't like wearing those goggles, but <laughs> I, I I made a, a, a fool of myself. Well, not really. A, I didn't really make a fool of myself, but I was personally embarrassed just because of how excited I got. Um, but I I went to a, an AT and T store and they had the VR goggles there, and I was like, "What's this?" And I never saw it before, and I put it on, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> this is so i got so excited because it was sharks it was like in the ocean oh man yeah and Love it was it was like in the water That's surrounded cool. by sharks and fish and no matter which way i looked there was sharks everywhere going above me around was me and it was a, it was real it was, it was real like f- live action like, like it live wasn't a video game awesome. it was That's like real awesome. footage to see that and everywhere i looked there'd be sharks underneath me around i could follow on them around i'm like what and i was like literally like what what is this it's uh, definitely it's definitely stepped up. The game has stepped up. Do you remember like in 2011, there was this big push for 3D TVs, 3D oh, yeah. TVs and yeah. stuff. And I was I remember thinking then like this is not gonna work. Nobody wants this shit. Nobody wants to wear. Sorry about the swearing. Nobody wants to wear goggles. There's no and, like, you can swear all you want. <laughs> and uh, and I knew I knew it was gonna fail because the world wasn't ready for it. I think the world is more ready for it now. But um, I I recently um, you remember those old uh, retro 3D viewers that oh, we yeah. look at. You put a slide in, you press yeah. the thing. Um, <laughs> there's a company that makes those, and some. My wife had given me one of these retro viewers that one of one of their licensees made. She works at Mattel, the toy company. Uh, one of their licensees made it as like a promo thing, mm. and I looked at it. And I was like, oh man, I want I want to do a series of body paintings on on these. But all the images that were in the slide were 2D. They weren't even 3D, but it sort of felt kind of 3D for some reason. And I went oh. to their website real quick, and and they produced 3D ones, but you have to take pictures of them with a 3D camera, which has two lenses, you know? And I oh, remember, okay. I remember 2011, there was that big push. I was like, I bet I could buy one of those 2011 cell phones for real cheap. <laughs> and I was right. So I got one on eBay for like $60, something mm. like that. And so for the past six months, I've been um, taking 3D photos of the body paintings that I've been doing, in addition to like all the social media video and everything, all the content you need to produce with everything you do now. I was I, I would remember to take, all right, just let me get a few snaps of the 3D thing. And I printed my first 3D retro viewer, and it's super cool. So now I have like another way to show 
That's this, so cool. You know, real thing in 3Ds, and it's very intimate with the old retro that, thing. You that know? would be a cool book, man. Uh, oh yeah, hell yeah. Come with those the goggles and you can yeah. wear the little glasses. That would be awesome, man. Totally. Yeah. That's so cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I've been I've been thinking about the idea of um, I talked with this artist uh, a month or so ago, Mike Thompson, who's like he does that um, Z brush, like three D sculpting. Right. Yeah. And um, I've been tempted to get into it and see you know how I could take my caricature illustration to the next level by actually sculpting someone i can turn them any way i want light it any way i want sounds awesome but then i'm thinking about it in reality i don't have time to learn that right now you know what i mean but i'm I'm, i hear you still playing with the idea of it but it's like you know i still really want to continue developing my oil painting and that that kind of stuff so it's kind of like what's more important to me it's really it's really tough nowadays to figure out what's the right path to take you know i've been all over the map going like just i've just been like jumping around um doing what interests me at the moment luckily like body painting has taken up most of my life i really love it you know but um you know i know a lot of people they like really they're really true to like past techniques and styles and tried and true and um but i think there's something to be said about exploring you know the future for sure oh Um, yeah i I think like the like it's amazing you know like the great masters of, of painting and illustration like they're just so unbelievably amazing um but they also had a lot more time than we did and a lot less distractions with like social media and netflix and all that jazz and light some people <laughs> didn't even have electricity you know like they worked by candlelight and had to work specific times of the day we have all these like things that help us and we can I, i'm always thinking like how can you how can you take advantage of that stuff to take something to the next level and it's cool like with what you do if you did zbrush and i think like you could just just play with it yeah that's, that's my plan time. Yeah. and you could take that and you can 3d print it you can make it realistic yeah, see that's what's crazy too is it like that's something I've seen people doing that. I'm like, that's insane. That's so yeah. crazy. Um, like part of part of my thing is um, eventually I'm gonna get it and mess around with it. But I was even thinking I could just use it to like start something. You oh, know, yeah. like like just like if I have to do Trump or something, um, just kind of do a quick sketch and then start sculpting it and getting it. You know, just enough where I can I can play with the lighting and choose how I want it to be lit, and then just pull that thing over to, to Photoshop and just finish painting it. Yeah, you know, I don't need to do like a full sculpt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, totally. But totally. It, 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 the thing I like about that is that you can create your own lighting, and that's one of the hardest things with illustration is that, you know, you've there's there's so many different covers that I've done where you've got to put like five st- six different people together in the same room at the same time. All your references are from completely different light sources, and you have to try to make yeah. it all come together. So. Yeah, that's it's, pretty cool. It's a challenge. Imagine what you could like learn from that from being surrounded by that <clears throat> oh yeah it's pretty wild hey you ever uh did, is your wife ever let you practice on her yeah i've painted on her a lot um but <laughs> it's it's at the point now where it's like you know you you finish your work and that's the last thing you want to do you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they want me to paint them on halloween so we have to wake up early and it's just like all right let's do this I'll see your kids and stuff yeah kids oh and, that's so cool luckily man. luckily my kids they just have like these really awesome ideas that don't involve body painting. So I spend like a couple of weeks beforehand building things. Oh, like my, okay. <laughs> my, my youngest, my youngest a few years ago, she wanted to be a, a Chinese takeout box. So I took oh, one apart cool. and I like, I took it apart to figure out how, how they're made, you know, what they, what they're actually, did you know that when you take a takeout box apart, it becomes a plate? No, I did not so you, know that. If you take it completely apart. It's a plate and you can just eat off of it. <laughs> what? I'm going to have to do that next time. And then last year, my, my other daughter wanted to be a mailbox. So I made this like very realistic looking mailbox. And both in, of them were They're into like, boxes. Yeah, I know, right? Interesting. <laughs> How old are they? Now they're 10 and 9. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, those are good ages. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. So have you done like crazy things in the past for Halloween? Like paint them up like super detailed with like monsters? Um, well, they wouldn't like let me paint them for the longest time. They didn't like the sensation of the airbrush. Oh, okay. Um, I've done like I think I did a. I've done like simple face painting on them. I've painted them for my own um, portfolio. Like in my book, one of the pregnant paintings is a watermelon with a watermelon slice. That's my wife and two daughters. 
okay. and the older daughter's a slice and the and the, the younger daughter's <laughs> in the in the stomach with a slice in the stomach painted you know and, yeah um and that was like you'd think that i was like beating the crap out of my daughter and i just made two stencils for her back of this water water watermelon oh. and it was just like tsh, tsh, tsh. it was like three you know and done but it was like screaming and oh and yeah bloody murder. it was like oh my <laughs> god <laughs> that, yeah, that's not that's not gonna work. And then that's I was crazy. when I first moved here, I, I uh, started learning prosthetics a little bit. I got really curious in the Hollywood gigs that I did, um, and so I tried to make this rhino horn on my younger daughter, and I got it on there nicely. It was pretty cool. Everything was cool about it. And then it came to like body paint time, and she would not let me finish the paint job. She just mm. let me, and I was like, oh my god, worst worst uh, body paintings ever. <laughs> Have you ever seen that show, that body painting Skin, show? Skin Wars? Skin Wars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. My, daughters, a... my daughters love that show. Um, I've done a lot with that show. Oh, yeah? What, what kind of stuff did you do? I am uh, I did a lot of promo work, a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. I did a lot of work like within the show. I When I first moved here, I, I was uh, asked to be the guest judge on... Um, casting and then they were going to have me as guest judge on the show and then i got cut because they brought a lot of celebrities in oh yeah and so i was supposed to do like a superhero episode so i got cut for for linda carter wonder woman which if oh. i'm gonna get cut for anybody yeah it's pretty ba yeah. <laughs> and then i i'm on the opening credits painting my work and me painting are on the opening credits of season one and mm. then i did um i did i just did like a couple of gigs within the show where i had to like add clear coat here and there and and stuff i can't talk about contractually you know reality yeah. tv stuff but i did a lot of um a lot of things like that yeah my daughter's I, I, it was like a while ago but they found it on netflix i was like what's this show i thought of you right away when i saw it but they um they just watched everything like every season like non-stop it was like one of those yeah. binge, binge things yeah. Yeah. i didn't think i was surprised that they were you know it's too bad the show ended but yeah i tried out for season two to be a cast member but i didn't make the cut and then uh season or was it season i don't remember now season two or season three so i just i wanted like originally i didn't want to be on any reality show it's yeah not, it's just not my like personality yeah but then I like mean, after season one i was like i feel like i should try out though. i don't want to regret not trying out yeah you know, yeah so. i mean it's different I mean, if you have an opportunity to, like, get your work out there and, you know, get that kind of exposure. I mean, you do it already. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I've, I've done two reality shows where I was judges, and the experience was very strange. I didn't really like it. Yeah. It was like – it was, it was it's funny because it's a reality show, but there wasn't yeah. anything real about it. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, there was Pretty a much. lot of – there was a lot of real stuff on Skin Wars, but it's sort of the standard, you know, the standard sort of produced yeah. – show you have a certain amount of time and budget so you can't just keep reshooting things so you mm. sometimes they would direct people like can you do this can you do that can you redo this can you do this again and i hate when people ask me to do stuff again a oh, lot yeah. of times when i'm on camera um and people ask me to redo stuff i i turn my airbrush around so i'm painting backwards because sometimes they ask me to fake paint and i hate when people ask me to fake paint Oh. So I, I hold my airbrush backwards intentionally because I know nobody's going to notice. <laughs> and so I'm on the special features of Ted 2 doing that. <laughs> it didn't it didn't make the movie, but I was like in the Comic-Con scenes of oh. Ted 2. And so I'm painting backwards with an airbrush that's not con uh, connected to any compressor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Jeez. That's crazy. Though. So um, what kind of things do you have going on? Like, what's do you have any recent projects right now that you can talk about that you've been working on? Yeah, I've been I've been uh, commissioned for for this uh, Snapchat show, Beauty Wow, and I'm doing my twentieth uh, episode next week. I think only like ten of them have aired, but mm -hmm. it's a pretty it's a pretty awesome show with insane exposure. Like the first the first one I did got like seventy million views in one day. It's insane. Wow. Um, yeah. That's like that's, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy numbers. And so like this is stuff that I I always normally would do um for my own social media push and I'd I'd um make things go viral gorilla style, you know, on shoestring budgets. So now here's a company that's hiring me to just do the actual paintings and stuff and uh 
and paying me. And so I don't have to worry about all the extra work of like putting it out there and getting that stuff done. So I just show up, paint, collect my check and bounce, you know? Yeah, oh, that's so, nice. Stuff I like to do. And so there's that. And then I'm, you know, producing <laughs> studio work and, uh, I'm prepping for a solo show, hopefully in October. Uh, those are, those take up a lot of energy, uh, cause I try to make it a big experience. And, uh, it's it, it's great to be super busy, you know, always. Um, but I I definitely take things one step at a time. I can't put I can't think about what's happening in two weeks. Um, yeah. Before what's happening this week is done. How uh, does it? Then, how does it uh, work with your with family life and everything? Like the- I, I've always prioritized family over anything, so I I make it work. You know I. You know, if I have to pick up, we only have one car. We save a lot of money just having one car. And uh, so I pick up my wife often from work and then we pick up the kids together. So I just like hustle hard during the day, pick them up and then go hustle out at night if I need to. Um, You know, things would obviously be a million times easier, (laughs) but, you know, life is life and you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, it's pretty much the same for me. Yeah, Yeah. it's it's kind of, um, you know like deadlines it's like you got to prioritize you know you got to make sure that you make the deadline but at the same time it's like oh but um this kid's got to go to the doctors or this you know it's like ah it always yeah yeah, yeah. things usually seem to work out but at the same time it's like one of those things where it's like uh, like i can't um, stop thinking about what i'm supposed to be working on right right you know you know (laughs) like in a way i feel like it's kind of like it's helpful it's almost helpful to have those requirements like the you know the scheduling requirements because like just like i said about uh, sketching and capturing the life i feel like have you ever worked on a drawing and put all your energy and time and spent hours on it and and got to the result and it was what what it was or and then you maybe did the same drawing under this strict deadline and you had to finish it in an hour or something and and you compare the two results and they're like almost the same. They're very similar. Have you ever had that happen? Um, not not in that way, but I get what you're saying. I mean, it's like like for example, this um this mad cover I just finished. I they gave me a lot more time than I hardly ever get, and I found myself slowing down a lot and taking my time and like um, I wanted it to be really good, but at the same time. I think I work better when I when I'm under more pressure. Yeah. Because totally. I'm like I I have to, um, you know, f- you know, basically if I have like a one or two day deadline, which is usually what it is, I have to kind of break things down. Like, okay, I've got this much time to paint this person's face. I've got this much time to paint the hands. I've got this much time to work on the the, the folds and the clothing and different things like that. Um, so I have to like kind of break th- these things down, and I don't give myself any more time in those areas unless I get it all done. And then I come back at the end and say, okay, I've got two hours left. Yeah. What else can I do to make this? What, what could be better? Um, so I have to try to plan it that way. Cause it's a, it's like a marathon basically. Um, yeah. and, uh, but like with this mad cover, like <laughs> it was crazy. Cause I was literally working on two deadlines, um, finishing up, um, a couple that, that were pretty quick deadlines, but still a lot of work. And then all of a sudden I checked my email and it was from mad and I'm, and it said interested in the cover question mark. And I was like, Oh no. Cause I was, I was thinking they're going to need it probably in a couple days. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't know if I can do that because I'm yeah. just slammed, but I was like, I can't turn them down. And then I opened right. up the email and they were like, Oh yeah, we don't need it until the end of April. I'm like, Oh, this is, this is, I've got a lifetime now. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm down. I'm doing this cover. Um, but then once I start working on it, um, you know, when, when you have those kind of deadlines too, where a client is giving you like a few weeks to do it, the thing that drives me nuts is, okay, I, I, I work, I work quick cause I'm used to it. So the f- first day I start working on it, I bust out the sketch. I do a couple versions, send them off, you know, then I have to wait a few days or not right. a few days, like a day or two. I'm like, and they're like, oh, this is really great. But how about we change this and this and this? I'm like, okay, I cha- I, I make the changes in like 10 minutes i send it back and then it's just right I'm, you know i'm like i'm like let's go let's do it come on yeah yeah, yeah. um <laughs> so th- there's a lot more 
interesting things that involved when you've got more time on a project. Um, but I definitely feel like if I have less time on something, I, I feel usually better about it. But there's also the times where you're like, man, I, if I had a little bit more time, that would have been great, you know, because sometimes you have to pull all, all nighters. Yeah. Um, and if you didn't have to do that, if you were more awake and, you know, so there's a lot of elements to it, you know, it's not. Yeah, there is. Stuff. I think the point I'm trying to make is for me. My results, whether I'm rushing or not rushing, are pretty close to the same. Unless it's just like extreme. Like, we need this done in half an hour. And so then it's just like a total vomit session, you know? But yeah. um, <clears throat> but I realized a while ago, like, some of the things that I sweated a lot, detail-wise, technique and detail-wise, are not that important. Especially in body painting. You know, like, if I... You know, I always find it funny that, like, maybe I'll miss like the inside of the finger or something, you know, and, and someone might point that out. And I'm always like, why, why do you really care that that part has pain on it? You know, does, does that really matter that much to be perfectly flawless? You know? Yeah. I think there's the, the grand picture of things. I think, you know, what is that like? How, how does that come off? You know? And even a lot of times, uh, like I'll see it like traditional painters like yourself and, and I'll see, they'll post like the work in progress, pop progress. And, uh, you know, you have this unfinished sort of border and this very heavily detailed focal point. I think that's just magnificent as is. Yeah, you know? yeah. I wish I could see more unfinished paintings because you see yeah. a lot more of the person behind it and the process in it almost, you know. And, uh, you know, so I, I've definitely kind of turned down the whole perfection thing and just make make jazz just make jazz well you know i you know i I love that that make jazz too because that is a perfect way to explain it because there's there are times where you just feel it and like um i did this piece for the new yorker um and it I, i i kept it really sketchy and i started blocking in certain parts of the face and i had a few days to do it within a few hours of me working on it i was like man, I really like how it looks right now. And I wish that I didn't have to do anything else to this thing. Um, and so I, I basically sent it to the art director and you know, it was literally just sketchy with just a few block in spots. Um, you know, the, the, basically the eyes and nose and mouth, uh, were more developed, but still there was a lot of sketch lines. And then the, the rest of it was like what you were saying, kind of just expressive and suggestive. So I sent it to the art director and I said, um, I will continue on, um, uh, and bring it to a finish, but I'm going to save this version because I prefer this. I think this looks great the way it is, and I'm I'm just really happy with it. But I wanted to show you before we continue, and I was like, I, I don't think she's she's probably going to be like, yeah, finish it. <laughs> but what was awesome is she wrote back right away. She's like, done. I love it. That's yeah. great the way it is. Yeah. And I was and like, and I did this in like three hours. This is awesome. Yeah. Um. That. But that's rare. <laughs> that's that, well. That's, it's rare know. that you do it. Maybe. No, I've, I, I've done it. I've done it a few times, but yeah. there's a, there's a lot of, see what ends up happening is, um, so, you know, like, like for me, for example, I've got a reputation of certain type of caricature illustration or portrait right, type right. work. So I've got, there, I've got realistic portrait stuff that's really tight. And then I've got portrait stuff that's more expressive and loose, um, which is, I actually prefer that kind of a thing a lot more. I love to see the, the sketch and I love to see like expressive brushwork. Um, but I'll, I'll get clients that, will say, hey, um, we want it to look like a photograph. Mm. And I'm just like, why Why am I doing this? Just yeah. use a photograph. Yeah. But usually I have to make it better looking than the photograph because right. the photo reference is so well, bad. You add, you add the emotion too. Yeah. That's so it, it really, that's kind of what it comes down to is a client can is kind of like, hey, you know, well, this is the work that we like. And, and you know, it, it goes back to what you were saying before is sometimes you start a job not really into it at all. And you just, you know, you do it because it's a job. Mm-hmm. You got to do it. But the whole time you're just like, oh, why don't they just use a fo- <laughs> freaking photograph? Yeah. And part of that so is like, part yeah. of that is being like typecast in a way. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yep. And like, like you look through my book, which I give to a lot of potential clients, you know, and it's like you can't really typecast me easily with what's in my book because it's like all over the place. There's yeah. like all these different crazy things I'm trying. And ultimately it's like. 
the question is, is answers is does this guy know how to body paint you know it's like for you it'd be like does this guy know how to paint does this guy know how to draw and what can you do for me i would love i would love it if more illustrators had like unfinished work mm-hmm. printed up and published i think it's just fantastic it happens sometimes like it's happened to me before with sketches too like because a lot of times uh you know yeah obviously you have to send a sketch for approval right and um i, I think it was uh <clears throat> man i can't remember might have been like wall street journal or something like that but i did a I did a sketch and they just, they loved the sketch. I'm like, w- w- can we just use this? So, sure. <laughs> that sounds great yeah, to so me. That's so great. That's so great. Yeah. But that, that's not as common, I think, in the editorial. Of course. But, of course. but, uh, but yeah, man, I love, like, um, I was at the Milwaukee Art Museum um, a while ago and uh, I, they, they, they don't normally have rock wheels there, but they had some rock wheels on display and mm. there were smaller ones, but it was so cool to see them up close. Um, one of them was like, very sketchy and loose and it was just amazing it was such a beautiful piece of art um it didn't need to be any more finished than that it was just awesome yeah um you could see like exactly what he was doing and there's it was just um, so do beautiful. you know so about nice. do you know about jc landecker oh yeah 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 his that's his teacher you know yeah yeah and uh amazing. In, in rhode island there's the museum of illustration it has a whole bunch of original landeckers and and uh, rockwells yeah and oh, man, I, when i went to that museum i was like why doesn't more of the world know about Landecker? Because he has that. And there's very only one book, sort of sketchy style. Of his, you know? yeah. As far as I know, there's only one book of his work. Um, it's pretty sad. It's pretty sad because well, he's. I guess he's gay, and so yes. in that time, it's very he sad. Was, he was like really shut down for being gay. You know, but yeah. The guy is just like stunning artist. Yeah, he he didn't get the credit that was deserved, and a lot of his work was destroyed. A lot of his work was lost. Um, yeah, it's 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 really fucked up. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a different time, different period. Um, and me- meanwhile, Rockwell was like such a like a playboy, <laughs> like get, getting around with all the ladies and just, you know, he was he was he was like, let's just he would be me too. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> um, and so but yet he's Americans, America's sweetheart, Norman Rockwell. Meanwhile, J.C. Leindecker was just a genius prodigy. Yeah. But yeah. Um, like you said, he, he got shut down. Um, brilliant artist, man. Um, yeah, I, I have, he, do you have his book, the book with his work? I do. Yeah, I do have it. It's just yeah. amazing, man. The when stuff when that... we moved here, I, I like left all my books in the garage. I haven't unpacked in four years, but oh, I have really? like, I have like a wealth. I have so many books. That's why I didn't unpack. Cause like, I don't even know how long I'm going to live in this apartment. Um, but we, we like save so much money here that I haven't unpacked. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, basically the biggest thing for me in my studio is I have two bookshelves. That's like, that's you know that and my art supplies. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I love I love the books and your book. By the way, this is is amazing. Uh, is there a way that people can get this book? Like, do you yeah. sell it on your, on your yeah, website? Yeah, it's on my website, bodypainter.com slash book, or just go to bodypainter.com and look for the book. And how in the world did you get bodypainter.com? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a great. <laughs> <laughs> so like you know, I, I've led like, just like a bizarro, like weird life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I've never, I've never gone on a regular path, and it's always been like involuntary, unconscious. Yeah. And, but with with bodypainter.com, I was like, man, I want to get that domain, and so I emailed the owner of it, and I said, hey, are you willing to sell the domain? Because they had they hadn't really used it for like five, ten years, and I had this, I knew that it would be super expensive. I was willing to spend a thousand dollars on it, even though it was like probably going to be like forty five thousand dollars or something. And <clears throat> and I emailed the guy, and he's like, "Yeah, I've had this domain for a while. I've, I meant to use it for something, but I never got around to it. What are you willing to spend on it?" And I was just like, "Well, you know, in my head, I, I'm going to spend. I'm willing to spend a thousand. I know he's going to laugh at that. So I was like, "Will you take eight hundred? And he's like, "A thousand, and it's yours." And I was like, "So." <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive, right? Yeah, that's. Cool. <laughs> I remember when I when I saw it, I'm like, that'd be like me having a website saying, uh, caricature caricaturist, or or yeah. even <laughs> or even taking it further, like having a website that's like, um, you know, 
the best caricature store or something, yeah. you know, something where yeah. it's like, that's like we're somewhere where you go, it just automatically, everyone's just going to get it, right. you know? <laughs> right. like and so like you, <laughs> you, you've probably dealt with the same thing that I have as far as like, how do you spell your last name? You know? Yeah. And so like, I was always aware, like I'd have business cards and stuff where people generally lose business cards and you'll be in like some, some social environment networking and stuff. And, and, and like, yeah, my website, paulrustan.com or rustanbodypaint.com. It's like, nobody's going to remember that ever in yeah. a drunk conversation. And so I, I went after Body Painter like, a, like crazy and I got it. And it's so yeah. awesome to be at a gallery show or something like, yeah, just check out bodypainter.com. Or I'll be body painting somebody live and someone wants to see more of my work. Like, just remember that Body Painter you saw at that show and just put bodypainter.com. Super <laughs> yeah, that's know? me. I'm the one. I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> Only one. <laughs> but yeah, I've had like I'm gonna change. Like, I'm gonna try to get um, artist.com. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Nailed Just look it. up artist.com. That's me. Just send them an email. <laughs> see if they'll take 500 bucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I got so lucky. I don't know how I pulled that off. Really. I mean, but that's pretty funny. I don't think that happens all the time to me. You wanna <clears throat> you wanna see some drawings of yourself? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's totally. got some uh, good ones. Uh, and let's see. You remember uh, Jesse? Oh, you yeah. know Jesse. He he okay. sent one this morning. Love Jesse. Yeah, I was very excited Jesus. about it. Yep, he's awesome, dude. Oh man. Um, do you see it? Let me know if you see it. Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> wow. So we got a lot of good ones. Um, fun ones. This one's by Laurent Grissat. That's awesome. Um, cross hatching. Yeah, it's cool, man. Because they 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 started coming in right away, so it was, it was interesting. Um, have you done any caricaturing for a while? It's fun to see, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see people's different takes on my glasses. <laughs> I know glasses can be challenging to some people. Oh, wow. <laughs> this one is by, uh, it just said Master That's Tall. Cool, man. I love the asymmetry. Yeah. yeah. Well, what I, what I thought was funny about this is you, it's, it's a, tr- a traditional drawing, which is great. But I love that you didn't try to get like a nice lighting picture of it. It's like... Shadow from the oh, window yeah, coming yeah. across that the paper. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks really cool. It does look cool, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, but it's like it's just funny. It's just like, oh yeah, I just did this drawing. Let me just snap a pic real quick. Uh, but it does look cool. It's got a cool vibe to it. Um, I love how the hair is done too. The wispy marker strokes. Yeah, it's got it's got a really nice style to it. I really like it a lot. It reminds me of um, John Cunio. I think is how you say his name. Is just an amazing. Yeah, I wonder if that like it reminds me of somebody specific. I don't know the name. I wonder if that's the artist that I'm. Yeah, thinking. he's he's awesome, man. Uh, this is by Jonathan Groot. Oh, wow! I think I that's gouache. That's really great. And I'm right now actually I'm a I'm kind of a sucker for those colors in the background. Yeah. I'm into, I'm into the whole sort of retro wave, '80s synth kind of thing, neon lights. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. Great, Do they, this is there. Hey, that's another thing I was going to ask you about. Uh, it looks like some of your body paints are literally like glow in the dark paint. Yeah, I use a lot of black light from time to time. That's interesting. So when you're painting on it that way, are you how do you have to paint in the dark with black light or do you I mean Yeah, I I do most of the time because one time I painted Cortana live in a hangout and I just did it with natural light and I, so I painted her head to toe blue. And then put black over it. And then when I put her under the light to photograph it, it was so bright. It looked like she was... Do you know? remember that movie Cocoon? Yeah. And they take their skin off and they <laughs> light up. It looked like that. So I had to go back and like coat her completely head to toe with black. Then like dull it down because it was so bright. Oh, wow. But yeah, so you need the light to see what you're actually doing. Yeah. yeah so it, it's, it's interesting. Um, like I said, I, I know nothing about it. So it's it's... It's like over my head, um, the whole technique of it. This one is awesome. <laughs> you know what's cool about Oh, I love that. <laughs> this is oh, Martin. He, he went and like checked out one of my uh, past body paintings and, and applied it. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, this is Martin uh, Jordan, Jordanov. Um, <laughs> it's I just really love... cool, the, the people that tune in and get oh, yeah. these drawings. They're really fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. It's just what, what it's so funny to me is just like the design of the body, the curve of the spine. It's almost like, in a way, when you first look at it, it's like, what is that? And then you just see that the ass. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's Rebecca. That's Rebecca, by the way. 
And that's my uh, my apron from uh, Search and Rescue Denim. They make these like three hundred dollar aprons. Uh, oh yeah, I noticed that in the pictures. It's really cool looking. The hair looks good too. Nice job yeah, with the hair. It. Yeah. It's gonna, how do you? I don't know. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, this is by Derek Brennan. I love that how, lip. <laughs> look at how beautiful the glasses are. Look at it, nailed the glasses. Nailed yeah. the glasses. <laughs> Yeah, that that bottom lip is great. It's That's nice. That's so cool. Love the painterly, everything painterly. These guys are so good. I'm yeah, supposed the, to pick a favorite of these. Yeah, we, we'll do it later. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll I'll email them to you as well. What I like about this one too is I like that um, it, it's got that painterly feel where there was an underpainting, uh, sort of like a burnt sienna or something like that, mm-hmm. and you can kind of see it pop through here and there. That's the kind of stuff that I love doing, and you know because digital painting. Uh, sometimes can have a uh, sort of a, I guess, a stigma or something about it where it's not really a painting, you know. Yeah, and does I, that still exist? I remember it, that was it, big and like it. It does 2000s. from time to time, and it's really? it, sh- it shocks me. Um, but what I what I love I love digital paintings f- for myself, anyways, where you purposely leave things um, a little unfinished or a little bit mm-hmm. here and there just to show, hey, no, this is a painting. You know, this is not um, some some computerized thing right. you know because a lot right. of people get confused about it still like oh that's just done on a computer it's like uh yeah no do you ever do any any regular traditional painting anymore oh all the time yeah i just finished oh, awesome i just did four uh 30 by 36 oil commissions for a college um in uh maryland wow um very like realistic Cha-ching. yeah realistic <laughs> um yeah very realistic type sergeant kind of type nice painting um i mean i'm not saying they look like sergeant but you know what i mean like that very yeah, proper yeah. I know. Um, like, he's like definitely the, like my the CEO influence. or the, the dean yeah like yeah but um when i when i do those kind of things they're kind of boring in a way um but if i can like give myself a goal like hey try to try to paint as much as you can like like zorn or sergeant and use that as, a, as an opportunity for me to just have fun and create sexy brushstrokes and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. it just makes me like, okay, I'm I'm loving it now. You know? Well, um, you know, you know, what was interesting about what I do, especially back when I started, is you know, a lot of artists would be like, what, like, why are you painting on people? You don't get to keep it. You don't get to have like this tangible thing afterwards. And now, like, it, you know, with digital painting, especially, there is no, there is no tangible, original. You know? Yeah. Well, that's that's one reason why. Um, you know, I, I continue to do my traditional paintings. I don't know if you can see. I got a painting of Johnny Cash that yeah. um, I'm going to be uh, – I'm work. I basically, in between commissions, I work on my own personal traditional pieces. Um, but I, I per- personally believe that the more that I paint traditionally, the better my digital paintings get. Um, and, and, and they kind of help each other out. You know, I learn a lot when I paint digitally, and, and I take that to when I paint traditionally – and I learn even more traditionally, and I bring that back into my digital stuff. So yeah, oh totally. Yeah, I think it's important. Um, totally. And I don't really care as far as the editorial work goes. I don't really care that I don't have an original. Some people are like, "Oh, you could just sell the original." It's like, "Oh, really? How many people want a painting of Donald Trump?" You know, <laughs> nobody cares about. It's an editorial illustration. Nobody cares. Now, for example, this Mad cover I did. Um, if I did that traditionally, uh, I'm sure someone would want to buy it. But it, but you know, mostly. Oh, great. I don't know if you can hear that, but hear someone's doing some yard work outside. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, this is not the Joe Rogan experience. So It's not me. It's yeah. Jason. It's me. <laughs> I got so. lucky. Usually my neighbor's like on the phone swearing, swearing <laughs> at somebody. Oh, so, man. So we'll have to just ignore the uh, the noise. I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> this is by Asmadi Abdullah. Little snails. My That's new so body weird. painting. <laughs> I have like you, how light, light my you, eyes are. It's like Clark Kent there. <laughs> oh my god, they're literally outside my studio right now. I'm sorry about that, guys. They're leaf blowing. <laughs> Jesus. You know what? I'm going to push pause for yeah. a sec. Um, hold on a second. Okay. It's a good sign, though, to have the leaf blowing happening. Yeah. Spring is coming. Cleanup time. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Uh Hopefully, I love how no, everyone no, is no. nailing the hair and the glasses flawlessly. <laughs> now, have you ever done this to a snail? That's what I want to know. No, <laughs> no, Peter, Peter would be all over me. 
Yeah, I could I could imagine doing that to a turtle. Um, oh, that would be cool. A turtle it? shell. That would be so awesome. Um, all right, so Whoa, here's right. this next one. This is by Guy Barbosa. Wow. It's it's crazy all these, you know, like back when I was drawing a lot of caricatures, I, I used to know everybody. And now I don't know anybody in the caricature world anymore. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, ever since I started doing this podcast, um, you know, I'm starting to know some of these names now because a lot of them have been submitting every episode. Um, but I've not been familiar with hardly any of these people until until this episode. Some of them are friends of mine. Some of them I've known for years. But most of them, um, are, they're just fans and sending in artwork and uh it's really cool because it's you know it's kind of building a, an art community a lot of these artists are from just all over the world you know so it's it's really cool yeah it's fantastic and they're all it. so good man this guy i love the yeah. mood of this one the mood yeah is insane. yeah i really like the the treatment of the hair it's just very suggestive yeah. it's nice yeah this is like a that's like a perfect example of uh you know leaving parts of it loose and creating kind of a focal point yeah for sure it's really pleasant. That's that's wild. <laughs> this one's by Mike Epp. Wild. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I love the curve too. That's a lot. Of, that's how I used to draw a lot. Was just these crazy curvy sort of heads. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing symmetrical. Nothing straight. Sometimes I would draw the neckline coming off the side of the paper instead of the bottom. Oh yeah. <laughs> and fit the head in there. You know. That's, that's funny. Really, I love the flow. Like it goes with like the. My fascination with water, how it's just like flowing, you know, mm -hmm. oh, all yeah. the way up through the hair and everything. It's awesome. Wow, nice. Jesus. It this is Yusuke. Yusuke Matsumoto. Of course. Japanese caricaturists, man. They're yep. amazing. Yeah. Like, I, there's a, I they... think there's a couple more, too. Yeah. Yeah, this is really nice. Um, very. It's got a really nice... Um, you know, it's it's a nice medium between or mix between portraiture and caricature. Oh, totally. Um, as well as painterly and you know realistic. You know, so it's it's really yeah. nice. It's incredible. Um, this one is by Adita Bahasser. Wow. So that's is that digital? That's digital, right? Yeah. It's crazy because it looks like almost like pastel, sort of with like eras erasures. On the mm -hmm. left side, it's pretty wild. Um, hey, before we continue, I want to make a little announcement. Uh, this is for anyone that's listening to this. Um, so if you're actually listening, uh, you might have a chance to win one year subscription to Adobe. Um, so basically, the first person to answer this, subscribe on my YouTube channel and email me at facethetruthpodcast at gmail.com. I will get one year subscription. So it's a very simple question. So listen up. Which episode did my friend um, and fellow artist Joe Bloom call in with a special voice question? And who was my guest? There you go. <laughs> and shh, if you know the answer, you don't say anything. I don't know if you know the answer or not, Paul. I, I know the answer. Uh, okay, the cool. Answer. <laughs> um, so here, here's another one. This is by Carlos Rubio. Awesome, man. Yeah, I like the hair a lot too. Yeah. Um, good, but yeah, I, I, like to, I like to throw in the the little question there and, and sneak it in a different place every episode, so people actually have to really listen um, and pay attention. So. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to show these to my wife. Yeah, this is cool. They yeah, all look I'll, better I'll... than I do. They're all very good looking <laughs> dudes, you know. So. <laughs> okay, that, oh, that, that's per that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this one reminds me of. Uh, of uh, what's his name that uh, oh gosh uh, Jonah Hill a little bit oh yeah like the, yeah the I could see that I could see that uh, this is by Francesco David incredible that's Very like nice. that's like my standard head shape <laughs> <laughs> this Apparently. is a I remember Joe Bloom was it Joe Bloom a long time ago someone I think it was Joe Bloom referred to as a pear oh yeah shape. yeah did he draw you yeah, I have I have one or two Joe Bloom. I I should have pulled out all my. I have your drawing of me. Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> Probably when I was trying when I was trying to do live caricature and I never did it before. Yeah, yeah, uh, I was over at the Chicago Caricatures. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. We did something. I don't. It was like some sort of fundraiser or something. Oh, I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't. I did not like the live caricature thing very much. Yeah. Um, I yeah, did it for it's a little not for bit. everybody. 
No, I mean, I think I would have liked it a little bit more if I did it at Great America and I and I got to do for work, sure. put in the hours. But I only did it one day a week oh, for yeah. one for one summer at Navy Pier, and yeah. it, it just wasn't you enough don't get to, to learn. You don't get no. to learn that much. And and I got really annoyed with people. Like I I realized that I just want to draw how I want to draw. And the other thing I realized was that I wanted to be an illustrator. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to sit there and like be a dancing monkey for people and, you know, draw me my son as Spider-Man. It's like, no, I'm not into that. I'm yeah. not, you know. Oh man, I have so many stories. We could talk for like three <laughs> hours on live caricature. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is by Leonardo. I think I can, I think or, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. This is not Leonardo. This is Leandro Cap- <laughs> uh, Capana Nema. Panama. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> what is that in the top right? It looks like there's a bird in my hair. Is that a bird? It's like a bird's nest. Um, oh, I think the leaf blowers are coming back, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I don't know what's going on in, in there, in the hair there. It's knowing me, it's either a piece of meat or, or chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, this is a great one. This is by uh, Patrick Harrington. Oh, wow. Oh, Patrick Harrington. I remember Patrick. Yeah. I remember that name. I've always loved Patrick's work. That yeah, is this, cool, is, this is pretty cool. I love the uh, uh, the, the way he drew the sharks. Yeah, um, they're awesome. It's sketchy. That's so cool, man. Get your ass bit. That is wild. Yeah. I love it, too. I still, I still don't care. I'd trade jobs with that guy any day. True dat, yo. That's <laughs> 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 awesome. That's, that's really great. Funny. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna print all these out for sure. Yeah, that's pretty pirate. cool. I'm gonna pirate it up. Wow. This is by Jesse. What? Uh, yeah. Jesse, Jesse. You son of a bitch. Isn't that cool? Incredible. Yeah, I love it, man. Wow. Of course, of course, Jesse. Of course. Yeah. He ha- he has to you know be creative and everything. Yeah, I gotta uh, I gotta talk about Six Flags a little bit. I think. I yeah. Gotta mention these guys. I mean. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, let's let's get through them real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's cool. Oh man, look at that. The figures this is in the back. Chico get Yamada. This one. Yeah, it's really cool right, style, man. Rainbow, the shape and everything. The flow. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome, man. Beautiful. Um. Okay, let's see here. The, the siphon feed, airbrush, and everything. <laughs> nice. This is by uh, Ryan Biddle. Nice. Very cool. I see the likeness for sure. That's me. Uh, another fun one. <laughs> the shark. It's by Michael Crotty. That is awesome, man. Roll reversal. That's that's yeah. so smart. <laughs> and such funny. a great rendering too. It's funny. <laughs> and, uh, I love the smile on the on the head of the woman. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this one's by uh, uh, Juan oh, Gastelum. Jesus, this is the last one. There's so many good ones. It's excellent. Yeah, it's it's cool, man. I always enjoy like you know checking my email and seeing. I have no idea who's gonna send what they're gonna send, and so yeah. it's, it's always a fun thing. Um. How many? How many are there in total? I'm gonna make. I gotta make a post about that on Instagram and credit everybody. Um, I hope there's I, ten of them. There's more than ten, I think. <sighs> All right, I'll have to do two posts, I guess. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll email them to you. I think there's like, I think there might have been fifteen. I don't know. I can't. I I wasn't really paying attention right now to yeah. how many we just did, but, uh, but yeah, it's always awesome. But yeah, you you guys all work together uh, at Great America for a couple of years, right? Yeah. So so like, you know, I always tell people. My best schooling was uh, caricature, was at Six Flags. You know, I, I got my bachelor's at the Art Institute of Chicago, and I got my master's at Rhode Island School of Design. But without a doubt, the most influential times of my life were at Six Flags Great America. Um, and I tell people that like, they should do that. But like you said, you know, it's not for everybody. I mean, I remember my my rookie season, <clears throat> I dove in. Like, I didn't – I was – I was really scared that I wasn't going to make money to pay the bills. Mm. So there's this like initial fear that you have doing caricature. Um, and you have to overcome that. You have to like walk through the fire in order to, to actually 
work, you know? And so I just like completely disregarded that fear. And there were definitely, there was a couple of rookies that couldn't hack it and they quit and they left. And there was one guy in particular, I remember he would just disappear from the booth and walk around the park for three hours. And then one day he came back and was like, I can't, I can't do this. I, I got to go. And he left, you know? Wow. Cause it's like, it's a heavy weight to, to sit there and have all these people watching you draw. And, and it's like, in a lot of cases, this is like your first time using an airbrush or whatever. And we all had the same story. We were like all like the top artists in our high schools or whatever and got a lot of praise our whole life with drawing. But then day one, you come in there, you sit down next to Gary Fawzen and you get shut down immediately. You're like back to square one. You're the worst artist in the world and there's nothing <laughs> you can do about it except walk through the fire. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's true. And um, for me, like I lucked out <clears throat> because like you said, the group of guys that I was with, we were doing things that like nobody was doing, you know? Yeah. In, in live caricature. Like, well, I found out quickly walking through that fire that I was making more money than I needed. So I no longer cared about the money. Like I was working so much that I couldn't even spend the money. So my bank account was just going up and you get, you get this decision where it's like, all right, do I want to, just do the regular sort of cookie cutter formulaic caricatures and just make money? Or do I want to really push myself and, and figure out how to get good or better or whatever? And I, I went the route of like, I want to take advantage of every minute of this and get as good as I possibly can yeah. and not, not waste any of the time. And, and there were a few days where I, I swapped just to see what it was like to do cookie cutter stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's just like physically and emotionally at the end of the 12 hour day, if you do doing, if I, when I was doing cookie cutter stuff, I had so much energy still left over and I made like twice as much money because you're faster and more people want your work because it's tamer. You know, and I, I don't hold anything. Mm-hmm. People draw what, whatever they want. There's nothing against anyone, whatever, whichever way you decide to draw. But when, when you really push your, your mental and physical skills to the end, at the end of a 12 hour day, you have just like this massive headache and you're completely exhausted and you go home. Oh yeah. You you can't even stand up and then you go to sleep and you wake up and go do it again. Six days. And some, you know, there were days where like you would get scheduled with no breaks and you you would do like 20 day stretches, you know, it was crazy. Wow. But what was amazing, like, I don't think, you know, Gary Fawzen, I don't know if, if people um, that watch are familiar with Gary Fawzen, but the Fawzen brothers are pretty much responsible for airbrush caricature in the United States, airbrush live caricature. And uh, I, I had the luxury of working with Gary, who, as much of a businessman as he liked to present himself to be, he was, uh, he could not help but enjoy watching the things that we were producing Grigor and Jesse and Raza and Ayala and Dex and you know so many guys <clears throat> I'm sure I'm missing a bunch of names that I should be saying right now um you know a lot of people came out of there Tom Richmond Ed Steckley um he's the one that like he was the gatekeeper and he yeah. knew what he was getting himself into by letting us letting us in and letting us grow and and celebrating what we were achieving. And we would get like, you know, we would definitely get more re- rejects than the average person. And he could have easily told us, cut that shit out. <laughs> yeah. But he, he couldn't help but enjoy it because we were we were producing stuff that was worth way more than the $18 that people were paying. And they don't even realize it. They don't even know it. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and For Grigor, sure. Grigor and Jesse, <clears throat> they were the ones that really unlocked that. And uh, and Ayala too for me, especially. Um, and Gr- you know, Grigor and Ayala both ha- I, they both did uh, my daughter's names tattooed on my arms, because they're like some of the the most influential artists in my life. And uh, I don't know, I learned so much from that um, mentally, like uh, philosophically, creatively, how to think outside the box. And I took all those skills and. I applied it to everything in my life and in a way like that was a blessing, but also a curse because it, it really taught me to do what I want to do the way I want to do it. Uh, And it let me less 
kept me less interested in doing things that other people want and how they want it. So as a result, mm-hmm. I, I make a little bit less money than I should, but I, I'm going to die a lot happier, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Um, yeah, Gary was amazing, man. He, um, I remember um, at, at the time, so before I tried doing any live caricaturing, I was already kind of getting a reputation for like caricature. Uh, mostly I was doing a lot of private commission type stuff and I was getting some small publications. Like I did Cracked Magazine and um, some some smaller no no name places. And Gary called me up one day and he and I I knew who he was already just because I was, you know, I knew Tom who Tom Richmond was and yeah. Tom uh, is the one that got introduced me to the NCN. He's like you should really be a part of that and everything. And so I, I knew all who Gary was and I knew Ed Steckley and all this stuff. Um, but I wasn't really, you know, I never tried the live thing. Um, and uh, he, Gary called me. He's like, I'd really love for you to, to uh, work at Great America. There's a great group, group of people here you'd really love. And um, I think you do really great here. But the problem was is I was married already and already had stuff. I was doing graphic design. Ugh, right. and I, hate, <laughs> I hated doing that. But that's what I was doing at the time doing some illustration. I was working for a magazine doing graphic design and I got to do some illustration and stuff. But um, I said, I told him, I said, I don't really know if I can do that because, you know, my schedule and everything. But then he invited me a couple times just to come hang out. So I did. I'd come hang out with Gary and um, and watch a bunch of you guys and stuff. And uh, yeah, he was such a cool dude, man. He yeah. was so yeah. awesome and such an encouraging person too. Like really oh, yeah. um, a good teacher too, you know? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and, and then um, I remember uh, I told him, "Hey, I'm gonna this this other guy contacted me, uh, Lothar Spear. You, you remember yeah, him? Navy Pier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he contacted me, and and it, it is closer for me. So I that's when I went one day a week to Navy Pier. Um, but you know, if if he would have given me like a weekend day, I probably would have stayed longer. Yeah. But one Wednesdays one day a week. I was some days I would do, you know, I would be drawing nonstop all day, and it was awesome. But most of the time, I'd sit there all day at, at Navy Pier and do, like, a drawing. Yeah. And were and you I, by yourself or did you yeah, have another artist? Yeah, by myself. Yeah. See, that's, that sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. Um, and that's the one thing I miss, man. It's like when I was doing caricature, I had this, you know, fraternity of guys and gals. And, like, we're brothers. And to this day, like, we'll do anything for each other without question. And uh, <clears throat> when I moved to the East Coast, I lost that. I don't, yeah. I don't, and then my whole body painting career has been solo, which is probably, I mean, your, your painting career, you have, you have a lot of good colleagues around there that help push you competitive, competitively and stuff. But for me, body painting was like, there was nobody I could bounce off of. And I, I certainly missed that because it was just like healthy competition it was, and, and encouragement. And it was so great. So oh, great. yeah, no, that's, that's a good, like Grigor and I are like, he's like one of my best friends. Um, so he's, he's one of those guys, him and Joe Bloom. Um, are guys that like I'll bounce off my stuff to them like hey check it out what do you think I'm feeling really insecure about this one what do you think about it and they'll just be honest with me you know yeah, and I great. think as an artist you need that you know oh totally um, and sometimes um, I'll share work with with them and all they say is oh that's really good that's awesome I'm like that's not really the answer I want like because I'm not feeling good about this one and they're like no dude it's cool chill out <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. So, you know sometimes it's funny you need you that, that you know <laughs> I especially now with like the social media. I mean, like back in um, early two thousand, I was doing web comics, and I before caricature, I was doing web comics, and I was growing a nice following doing that, and 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 I had gotten this sort of taste of attention doing that, where I would go to like a comic con and people would ask for my autograph and things like that. And it, I was very uncomfortable with that. It felt really weird, especially as an yeah. introvert. You know, like I didn't like the attention. And so I shied away from it a little bit. <clears throat> and then social media sort of came about and you get all this positive feedback for things you post. Like, that's amazing. That's great. This is all, oh, you're amazing. You're the best, best in the world. And I think luckily, like, the taste that I got allowed me not to let any of that go to my head, you know? Yeah. And so now, especially, I have, a, like, a lot more exposure. I, I've seen a lot of body painters especially let those things get to their head and and it affects them in a bad way through the evolution the course of becoming like pro body painter sort of and luckily i i didn't 
have to deal with that. But when when Grigor or or Ayala or, or Jesse or anybody anybody who I really admire and respect compliments me, that's when I know I did something good. Because oh, yeah. I, I hear their compliments always. I I don't hear anyone else's criticism or compliments ever. Yeah. No, that's that's the truth. You know, there's I, I I'm exactly with you 100. percent Like, um, if you know, there's a there's a handful of friends of mine that I really re- really respect uh, their art, and when they say something, it that's it, that, that's when it means something. You know. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, not not that it doesn't mean something when fans say stuff, but it's those people that you know, um, you know, you respect their work, and you know they're not bullshitters. Yeah. Um, and you know because they're the ones that will tell you too, like, hey, dude. You know that sucks. I remember one time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember one time you like early on when we first met. Um, you knew it's it's so ironic that I have you on now because I just finished my first cover for Mad Magazine. But I remember when we first were hanging out, um, you were asking me about what I wanted to do, what I wanted to become, and and I said, you know, I want to be an illustrator. I want to be. I want to do. I want to do what CF Payne's doing and what all these guys are mm-hmm. doing. I want to be the next CF Payne, the next this guy. You know. And I want to do Mad Magazine, and I want. And you were like, I think you could totally do that, man. And then um, you said, but you got to work on your noses. Your noses aren't very good. <laughs> you told me that, and I was like, what the fuck's he talking about? My noses are fine. But then you know what? After you said that, I, every time I would go to draw a nose, I'm like, I would. I started oh, focusing it. more. I started yeah. focusing more and being like, okay, th- why does he think there's something wrong with my noses? So then I just started like paying extra attention to that. So I I didn't take it as an insult. I took it as a okay. Well, maybe I got to work on my noses. You know what I mean? Like, and some people they take those kind of things and they that you know, um, like like Ishmael Rolden. He told me um, he was kind of like he's an illustrator. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with who he, who he yeah, was. I remember. But, yeah, I remember his work. But he was like everywhere, and he was a big influence, and then he became my friend. But um, at the time, he was kind of like. He was very brutal in critiquing my work, and mm. he told me he said, "Hey, man, um, your your likenesses are awesome. They're they're better than 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 most." And he goes, "But your hands suck so bad. <laughs> the hands are terrible. You have to learn how to draw hands." And I was like, "It it bummed me out for a second because you know he was someone I really looked up to, and I and I felt embarrassed." Like, oh, my God, he thinks my hands are terrible. But then I was like, you know what? He's right. They are. I hate drawing hands. They're so hard. But then I just started drawing hands over and over and yeah. over yeah. until I until I figured it out. But, you know, that that's you know, that's what it takes, I think. And I, and I think, you know, if we if we as artists have people like that in our oh, lives, totally. uh, that's that's what we need. You know, like my wife, for example, she's an oil painter and an artist and um there's, there's all the times she'll come up. I'll be working on, on like this oil paintings that I was working on, and I'm working all day, like like eight nine hours straight, just painting this face. And she'll come up and she'll go, "That eye's not right. Uh, you need to fix this thing that it's that." Part. And I go, "I haven't gotten there yet." She goes, "Oh, I'm just letting you know." Like she'll just like flat out tell me something's not quite right about that spot. And I'm like, "God that's damn so it, nice. she's right. Yeah, she's right." Nice. <laughs> you know. And then, you know. It, yeah, the, you know what it is for me. It's like. It's like uh, I I really appreciate those moments because we are we are biased towards our own work and we can't even see yeah. what people see and that unlocks it that like totally unlocks it and you're like well well you're totally right I yeah. never thought it and I think a lot of times the the error in it comes from drawing from your comfort zone and not what's actually there and so mm. you have to like yeah yeah like, damn it, just get out of Stop yeah. that. Draw what's there, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's really funny. I just um I just finished doing some critiques for students the other day and it's it's always interesting to me when they add things to a person's face that is not there. You know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, we know the person has eyebrows, but why did you draw the eyebrows that way? It yeah. doesn't look like them anymore because you just drew random hairs in a weird direction, but that person has specific eyebrows. You know, or like when people just draw ears on somebody. You didn't draw their yeah. ears. You just drew ears on them. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ears are very unique. I always use, character. when I teach um, young kids about drawing, I, I use tab- a table as an example. And I show them. I actually show them a table. I, I say, all right, let's look at the table from here. Look at the table here. How many legs do you see? Four legs. All right, now come over here. How many legs do you see? Three legs from this one angle. You only see three legs. It's like, well, why did you draw four legs if you only see three? 
and that usually gets the point across, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's and, a good and point. they kind of they kind of click a little bit when they do that. And I apply that to everything, even in body painting. You know, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I mean, I do make stuff up decoratively from time to time, but I still like refer to a lot, whether it's like just my visual memory reference or like some sort of photographic reference. I, I never, I never discount drawing what's actually there. You know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, my dad um my dad told me something very important like years ago and it it just sunk in. Um I was having a difficult time. I was teaching myself how to paint um but I was having a hard time understanding values and you know, and I asked him like if I'm painting a forest um and there's fog in the forest, how do I do I just take white and just kind of thin it out and just kind of lay it over the painting to make fog and he was like no there's no such thing as fog there's no such thing as trees there's no such thing as any of those things uh it's just one correct color shape and value placed next to the to the another one and in the end it'll, there'll be an illusion that there's fog yeah. in the forest it's all about value and light and then he said um there's no difference in painting if it, like there's not there's not a difference between painting a nose or painting water it's just value, color, shape, yeah. light. That's all it is. Um, and w- somehow when he said that, it, everything just clicked. And I was like, oh, man, that makes yeah. perfect it's sense. beautiful because it's just, it's so simply explained. And it's almost yeah. easier. Like, why did I ever think any other way? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, and in, like, as soon as I started painting after that, I started, like, really starting to get it, you know. Um, it's an interesting thing. But, um, you know, it's... Um, I actually have to get going pretty soon because All I have right. to pick my daughters up from school. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to. I don't want to cut it too short. But this was an awesome time ch- catching oh, up with you, you man. Yeah, like yeah, it's, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, same here, man. Oh, hey, I'm gonna be in Chicago in May. Oh, okay. Uh, May 10th. It's Friday night, May 10th at the Moxie Hotel in Chicago. I'm gonna be painting live. Oh, okay. So if you if you Wait. anybody can come out, come check it out. Yeah. Um. Drop me a line for a reminder, and I can see okay. what I can do. Um, yeah. That would be awesome to hang out. How long are you going to be there for? See if I could get Grigor and everybody to come out, too. And then, and then Oh, yeah, for sure. Out, you know? I'm going to be there with a lot of family and everything. It'll be a party. You're going to be here for a couple days? Yeah, I'm going to be kind of running all over. Um, but so, so that Friday night is really the time to meet up if you, if you guys wanted to. But yeah, and, and yeah, anybody, definitely. Anybody who's in Chicago watching, come check it out. It's open to the public. It'll be yeah, pretty, for sure. cool, pretty cool event. Um, I'm going to be in Pasadena uh, oh, September... Sweet. I think September 6th through the 9th at the nice. Lightbox Expo. Have you heard of that? No, but um, I'll, I'll meet you there. Yeah, Lightbox Expo sure. is uh, something that Bobby Chu put together. It's an art expo. There's like meet hundreds of artists doing workshops and demos. And, Sweet. Um, I'll have a booth, and I'll, I'm going to be doing some demos and stuff. But, but I'll be in your neck of the woods then. So awesome. we'll have to yeah, check we'll get out. To, we'll get together for sure. Cool, man. Well, thanks a lot for doing this. And uh, everyone, follow Paul on his Instagram. Um, what's your Instagram again? It's Rustan. At R O U S T A N Rustan. No, that's that's the whole thing. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's it. Nothing. You got my you website. Got, my website is bodypainter. Body right? painter. Like it's like real. <laughs> you know what's funny? I always thought your Instagram. Like all all this time, I thought your Instagram was um, Siler Pants. Siler Pants. Have you heard that before? Yeah. And it wasn't until that. like we were prepping this that I was like, wait a second, it says paint. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I just I try to keep it like basic. Like hey. My my name is Siler and I paint, because uh, because Siler was taken, Jason Siler was taken, um, yeah. and I didn't want to do like Jason Siler one hundred and two or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Siler paints, but I get that a lot. I, th- I thought it was Siler pants. Like why yes. the hell would it be <laughs> Siler pants? I'm guilty of that too. But it's all right. <laughs> anyway, man, I love you. Thanks so much for doing this, and uh, we'll talk soon, bud. Totally. Thank you, man.